I'm Cheryl Lynn is the director of Heritage Assets and the Historic Preservation Officer for Fort Monroe. Good afternoon. I really want to thank the National Capital Planning Commission for the true honor of being here. I am thrilled to have this opportunity to tell you about a project I was involved in and see if it might be applicable and helpful here in Washington, D.C. First, I want to thank Robert Kelly for putting my slides together today. And also, I have to thank Jim Meadow, who was the executive director of the Presidio Trust and the board of trustees at the Presidio Trust during all this. My colleagues Chandler McCoy and John Pelka, the architecture firm of Gensler, the planning firm of SMWM, and most of all, George Lucas for paying for it all. Now, just in case you think fitting federal uh, funded uh, projects onto federal land only has to do with Washington, D.C., I would point out to you that what you are looking at is entirely federal land, except for the bridge and this gray area in the back, which happens to be a little city called San Francisco. All of the land that you are looking at is the Presidio of San Francisco. It was started in 1776 as a Spanish stronghold, moved to Mexico, and became part of the United States fortifications in 1849. It was home to the Ninth Army until 1994, at which time it was subject to the Base Realignment and Closure Act, better known as BRAC. It automatically became part of the Golden Gate National Recreation Area, which is the largest urban park in our United States. It became part of that park because in the legislation for it, it was stated that if it became, the Presidio became excess to the needs of the Department of Defense, it would automatically become a national park. However, when the National Park Service prepared a $36 million budget for the 800 buildings, 26 roads, 460 historic properties, part of a National Historic Landmark, 1,480 acres, and this amazing view of a certain bridge, Congress balked and said, we're not going to do it that way. We're going to do something new and different. We're going to establish the Presidio Trust, a federal agency in, intended to be there only to make it economically self-sufficient. The key was the rehab of the buildings using the Federal Tax Act and limited new construction. The most important site was the old Letterman Hospital site, which was a total of 23 acres. It would enable 800,000 square feet of new construction, which would house George Lucas's Industrial Light and Magic, Lucas Sound, Lucas um, education. The new construction would be built at the main gate of the Presidio. And as I said, it would be located both within a National Historic Landmark District and a national park. Today, this design has been award-winning and all believe that it works very well in the national park. But I can tell you I have a few um, scars on my arms from the controversy that it caused. Let me tell you the story. Before it was constructed, we had the Latterman Army Medical Center and the Latterman Army Medical Research, constructed in 1969 and 72, 800,000 square feet, two miles of road, suburban parking lots, empty since 1989 when it was damaged by the Loma Prieta earthquake. Um, it was, to say the least, an eyesore at the entrance to the Presidio. Presidio Trust sent out an RFP and solicited several proposals for new, low, mid-rise buildings for either education, arts, scientific research, environmental studies, multimedia, internet-based research and development, high-tech industries. The property before those um, hospitals were uh, built was originally part of the Panama Pacific Exposition. Built on filled-in land in 1915, 
It was built to celebrate the opening of the Panama Canal and also that the city of San Francisco had survived and recovered from the recent 1906 earthquake. And if you look at the yellow area here, this is the 23-acre parcel on which the Letterman site is located. I would note to you th this row of buildings as well, which were uh, doctor's offices um, connected to earlier hospitals, which are adjacent to the Letterman site. And you'll see that one building in particular, the Palace of Fine Arts, remained from the Panama Pacific Exposition and was a key part of how we looked at this site. The maps that you're going to see on these slides are from the planning and design guidelines for new development for the Letterman complex. First, the map on the left, you will see first the Palace of Fine Arts, which I told you about, which was originally was constructed out of plaster of Paris and then built in a permanent um, material in the 1930s because it was so beloved of the city of San Francisco. The hospitals here, first 1896, which still exists, uh, has been turned into the Rowe Center for Sustainability and Offices using the tax credit. Second building built during, set of buildings built during World War I. And then this Letterman Hospital actually occurred during World War II, was demolished for the Letterman building that I showed you that we demolished. So the site had a very complex set of histories that we had to take um, into consideration. As I stated, we developed planning and design guidelines for the Letterman complex, 40 pages of them with SMWM and the Presidio Trust staff. We had a palette of materials derived from precedents uh, found elsewhere at the Presidio, plant materials also found elsewhere at the Presidio, which were non-invasive and drought tolerant. And you can see the importance of, these are the views of the Golden Gate Bridge, if you were looking this way um, from this site. Most important view of all being the Palace of Fine Arts. Uh, an important uh, aspect also was these were all residences. Uh, the occupants of these houses wanted to continue to have a view, if they could, of the Golden Gate Bridge. So it was a rather complex site, to say the least. And this is, in fact, the picture of the Palace of Fine Arts and the new construction. Uh, you can see the um, views that were established between these linear buildings, which were very successful because as you came into the entrance and still today, on the right-hand side, you see the building, but you also see the views of the Palace of Fine Arts. As I stated, we used the palette of buildings from the Presidio itself. Um, we had 460 buildings to choose from. Um, the key things were the red roofs, masonry, um, windows, porches, pretty simple elements, but ones that were um, put together in new construction, which was very successful. The six primary guidelines that we used, and I think this truly was part of the reason for our success, were they were land use and public access, the natural landscape, the cultural landscape, scenic views, building form, and access, circulation, and parking. Here I have uh, included uh, information on the actual um, natural um, landscape itself, um, where uh, we had lists of where there were uh, riparian um, corridors, where there were um, species that we need to be concerned about. And that was equally important to us as the design elements of this project. Sustainability and connectivity, a key aspect of this project as well. And the end um, results were narrow, rectilinear bar buildings with lower height, um, connecting corridors. I think you saw that in the last here 
Industrial Light and Magic has um, a large number of employees, hundreds, all of whom need to be in contact with each other all the time. They, um, George Lucas did not want them necessarily outside because it's such a distracting environment. So they wanted to be able to connect between offices using those corridors. Prominence of a public park, which was open to all. Um, Larry Halpern was the designer of this. Um, worked very well, although initially wanted, we wanted something that was a little more structured. Um, because it was a national park, he felt very strongly it should have a national park feel to it. Um, the uh, views of the Palace of Fine Arts and attention to the edge. This is the edge of the actual um, Letterman Digital Arts Project, which backs up against that row of doctor's offices that I was telling you about. The keys to our success, I think the planning and design guidelines for site, the extensive analysis and mapping of those six criteria. These were not just architectural design guidelines, which I'm most used to dealing with. They included every aspect of the planning characteristics of this site. And we did a lot of research. That's how we knew there was so much integration to the Panama Pacific Exposition. That's how we knew where the natural um, uh, species and, and landscape was. Second, I think lots of examples from context. We were able to use the existing buildings that we had at the Presidio to inform the design palette. Instead of tweaking design aspects, we actually eliminated those that were problematic. We didn't try and fix them. We just said when the Gensler team came in with a curved dining room on the edge of this so that the employees could see the um, Golden Gate Bridge, that that would not work. We respected all the design elements equally, as I was saying, and no one took precedence over the other. Though some originally thought that we were on the dark side of things, we think we turned to the light. <laughs> and I wish you here in Washington, D.C., that the force be with you in designing new construction in historic areas. Thank you. Thank you.